Hello. Hello. Well, can you believe it has been one year today since we moved on board Laura Maisie? This time last year, we were flying backwards and forwards between boat hatches with boxes and boxes of stuff that we had no room for, we couldn't find the perfect home for. And in fact, I'm still sorting out storage space now because there's still things that are in the wrong place. But and That's where they're going to stay because they've been there for a year. <laughs> there's no point moving if them. If I move them now, we'll never find them. We won't know where they're. It, how can you lose things on a boat? But you do. Anyway. We've got two small cupboards there where uh, on the side unit thing there. And every time you open them, <laughs> stuff comes falling out of it, doesn't it? It does. But, still, it's you know, right. it's, it's good. Um, but yeah, where did that year go? Absolutely just... unbelievable. So we thought we'd just put up a little bit quick video outlining um, the miles we've done and how much we've spent, etc. A complete review of the year, isn't yeah, it, really? Yeah, absolutely. So in the whole year, we started off at Middlewich and we ended up in Liverpool with Foxes Afloat. What a, what a week that was. Yes. And oh, then we yeah. headed back down south to Oxford for Christmas and then came all the way back up to Middlewich. Uh, to have the bits and bobs done that we had done last week. And it's just a fluke, really, that we've ended up exactly a year on in the same place, yeah. you know, doing that circle. Yeah. Um, wasn't planned that way, but that's how it was. So a year on, we've actually moved on a little bit now. We're at Nantwich, um, which is just not very far from Middlewich. But yeah, almost exactly at the same place, a year on. So let's get into this then. We've done 575 miles <laughs> in a year. I mean, that's not a lot really, because some crew, people just keep cruising day in, day out. But uh, for us, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, even though quite a lot of the time we were stuck all around Oxford at Christmas, waiting mm. for winter closures to reopen. Um, but yeah, it's interesting when you add up from month to month over the winter, we've been doing some months about 20 miles and then we're back up to, I think it's about 60 miles already yeah, in April yeah. this time. Um, so we're slowing down again now because uh, <laughs> we just need to chill, don't we, and get yeah. back into the flow. Yes. We've been a bit manic. Yeah. Uh, and in that, in that year, we've done 339 locks. I think I did most of those. I think you, did. <laughs> you might have done most no, of those. No, I don't think I did, really. You don't let me do the tough ones, do you? <laughs> well, it's not, not letting you do them. It's, it's what's the point of No, but I mean, you're, the, you're a gentleman. I'm not saying you oh, say you yeah, can't yeah. do them. You say, no, friend, I'll do it for yeah, you. Yeah, no. So that's 339 <laughs> lux. Uh, and uh, some of those we've done more than once because we've done the same stretch, stretch of canal, haven't we? Uh, yeah. Especially the Oxford going down and coming back up. Same street. But when you think each one is three at least lock gates, isn't it? So mm. all those paddles and mm. gates, you've, I don't know. I can't imagine how much we've muscle power has gone into that. But mm -hmm. <laughs> So on to costs, we have spent £784 on diesel. Yes. Which yeah. is... Um, quite surprising I thought I was a bit surprised when we totaled it, totaled it all up well the, the price has gone up well astronomically even over yeah. this year it's it was what 70 pence or something no, when we it? first started on this boat a year ago it was about 85 90 okay. pence a litre we're now paying one pound 50 upwards uh, per litre we are really conscious of what diesel we use. We very, very rarely use it for um, the heating, although we have got a diesel heater on board. Only occasionally do we use that. And also for the water, we don't really, we wait until we've been running the boat and we've got hot water or we just boil the kettle. So we don't run the engine unnecessarily no, ever. Don't. And we time, ch tend to try to plan our cruises so that it's better to cruise three miles, three miles a day and have hot water rather than doing big, long cruises. It mm. doesn't always work out like that. But we are very conscious of it. And we, I think, hardly ever run the engine just for power. Only no. in the deepest, darkest December, January, uh, when we've struggled a little bit, have we run the engine, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. So. And we've spent on gas, uh, bottles of gas for cooking, um, £195.50. Yeah. So I think... That was surprising because I think that's five, was that five bottles of gas? Five bottles, non Constanza. We worked bottles. on a, sorry, on Constanza, we worked on a bottle lasting for three months. And it's not now, and I don't know why. It might be something to do with the fact that I keep leaving the cooker on. Somebody left the oven on, uh, oh God, it must be about six months ago now, left the oven on overnight. 
and it was summer and it was roasting in here the next it's morning. It's <laughs> so quiet. The oven is so quiet and it just gets sometimes turned down and forgotten. Not by you, it's, it's my thing. So yeah. Not anymore though, because I remind not you very good. every time you've used the oven, yeah. you switched off. Yeah. <laughs> But still, despite the fact that we cook a lot on the stove and we use the thermal cooker, there's still a lot of gas. And it I think I need to look at that. Yeah. So I don't, it's, it, is, it is only the cooker that we use, isn't it, for mm. gas? So that is surprising, really surprising. And uh, see what we can do about reducing that cost. I did read about a lady once that only ate raw food. She lived like a long while and only ate right, raw food all the time. So we could do that. Moving on. Uh, Coal. <laughs> <laughs> we spent £371 on coal. <laughs> and uh, I was surprised at that as well. I didn't yeah. realise we'd spent so much. Do we know how many bags that is? Oh, I've got no idea. Um, they're, they're about £13, £14 a bag now, I think. Yeah. But we still do so forage least, for wood, so as that's you know. At least 20, 30 bags, and yeah. 20 to 30 bags of coal. Yeah. But it's, I think we're quite careful now with this fire. We don't, we only um, use wood that we know is dry. We were a little bit slapdash sometimes on Constanza. Um, but we don't want a smoky boat. We don't want a smoky chimney. So we, we're very careful only to use old wood. So sometimes mm. it does mean that we use coal. And also the fire is really easy to keep in overnight with coal, isn't it? It this is. One. And in the depths of winter, we have kept the fire going overnight, which we never did on Constanza because it no. would never stay in, would it, overnight? And the boat was that much smaller mm. that it was easy. The, the fire heat went through to the bedroom and it was lovely and warm on Constanza. This boat is also lovely and warm, but it is eight feet bigger. And so it takes a little bit more to keep it warm overnight, doesn't it? And also we've been buying the best coal we can in, in the main, haven't we? Yeah. We, 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 we prefer a coal called XL and that burns, I don't know whether it burns more efficiently than any other coal, but it doesn't leave so much dust, does it? And, and much waste. No. And, and everybody uh, that you ask about coal will give you a different answer and everybody's got their favourite and I guess it depends upon your fire and how you want it to burn, whether you want flames or you just want a glow. But it works for us, doesn't it? And mm. um, it doesn't seem to give it that acrid smell that some coals no. do. You open the door sometimes to add coal to the fire and, oh, the stink is awful. Absolutely awful. So, yeah. But so there's it, not a lot we can do about that. We need to no. keep warm and we need a glowing yeah. fire in the winter. So Because we're getting really old now. And uh, <laughs> in addition to that, we spent £30 on kindling. Uh, that's just because we couldn't find any kindling to in the woods because we've been yeah. in towns or whatever haven't we so we bought the yeah. bag of kindling usually when i'm walking the dog i come back with an armful of little sticks they go by the fire overnight and in the morning they're ready to light the fire if it needs it but it uh, doesn't always work out and what you must have before you put your boat in the water or when you put your boat in the water is a license canal and river trust license and that has cost us one thousand sixty seven pounds fifty pence that's for this boat. It's worked out on the length and the width of your boat, so it would be different for a smaller boat. But um, that's, I guess, equivalent to what people would pay for council tax in a house. Yeah, I'm not sure. We lost touch these days with what council tax costs are, haven't we? Yeah. So we really don't know. But that's, I mean, I think that's actually very, very good because when you consider that's the man management of the locks and the canals, and I know people grumble about locks being broken, but when you look at the cost of repairing some of these locks mm. and how sometimes they get abused, the ongoing maintenance of the canal, our waste um, disposal, water facilities, I think that's pretty good. That's and, not bad value. And the streaming down of wildflowers on the banks of the canal. Yeah. <laughs> it's my latest pet hate. <laughs> Going on. <laughs> so that's the license fee. Uh, insurance, you can't have a boat on, on the system without having insurance. You won't get a license without insurance. So, and that's £530. And that is dearer than Constanza was because she was obviously quite a cheap boat being an old boat mm. to um, insure. And obviously the replacement of this is a lot more, so it's a, an expensive insurance. But uh, we just have to swallow that. It's just a yeah, have, to, have to have it. Represents £10 a week, doesn't it? So Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's uh, not bad expense for the security is it so i mean there are you know you all see stories of a boat that gets sunk in a lock or a fire and your home is gone so you cannot when it's your home it's not just a weekend boat for us it's everything we've got so we have to have it fully mm. insured um peace of mind so the next expense is uh 
engine servicing. <laughs> We've paid £237.64. pence. Now, we don't service our own engine. Uh, the first service was under warranty, and the second service we had done at Tooley's Boatyard in, oh, in Banbury. Yeah. We thought we'd treat it to a boatyard. really good service, and I know you could probably get it done a lot cheaper um, elsewhere or by getting an engineer to come out to do it, but, uh, yeah, we just wanted it to be a really good service, and I'm confident that they did mm, that. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I never ever learnt to manage the engines, as I promised four years ago, and I was all excited about learning about engines. Um, it's not for me. No. I can do the uh, engine checks, and uh, I know more than I did four years ago, but uh, no. Just polish it down again, Fran. <laughs> and the final cost uh, is broadband. We use this little gadget here. It sits in the window. And um, we find it works fine for us. It's, you require 4G and it converts it to Wi-Fi, who knows how. And that costs us £444 a year. That's £37 a month. So that's quite expensive. And we used to have three, didn't we? Uh, and that they, we found the coverage with three was getting worse, especially on the eastern side of the country, Leicestershire and all the way down to Oxford, that, that direction. So we switched in the end uh, to EE and we thought, well, it's an extra tenner a month, you know, for peace of mind. And it has been better. It's been much better. And it? lowers the stress because quite often Richard worked really hard days on a video. Oh, really hard, yeah. And then you can't get the video uploaded. And obviously, you know, we need to we need to do that. So we have to have a good system. Um, and this works OK for us. Yeah. And if it doesn't, we still occasionally have to go to the pub to get... Um, yeah, a pint of Wi-Fi. Yeah, not very often, though. But we don't have a television on board. Um, so all our TV watching, all the YouTube we watch, everything goes Music. through the laptops. Music we listen to is all streamed through uh, the internet. So uh, for us, it represents great value, I think, don't you? And sanity. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Especially in the depths of winter when it's dark and you you can't go outside after four or five o'clock yeah. you, and you just sit and snuggle down and watch a film, yeah. listen to music. It's uh, brilliant. Yeah. So that's it. That represent that is three thousand six hundred and fifty nine pounds sixty four pence. Now I think we did a costing video on Constanza and it was about two hundred pound a month yeah, it then. Was. Yeah. Um, so I know certain costs have just gone up. And I think we live as cheaply as you possibly can, really. We, as I say, we don't waste the diesel. Um, we haven't got the, the fire burning 24-7 halfway for half of the year. We're pretty good at just keeping warm, just warm enough and using what we need. Mm. Um, but I think that's still pretty cheap. You couldn't live in a house for that, I don't think. I don't you know. think so. That's three, just under £305 a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you still have to buy your boat, and, but you still have to buy a home or rent a home to live yeah. in. So, um, I mean, you can buy a flat for the same price we bought this boat, but you've still got to furnish it. And uh, we've got everything we need already on this boat, haven't we, for the price of a flat. And I'm sure you're not going to get your heat, your, your facilities, council tax for £300 a month. We're a little no. bit out of touch because yeah. we've not done that for four years. And apparently but... <laughs> electric and gas prices have gone through the roof, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, I think it's despite people saying that living on a boat isn't cheap, Obviously, you've got the cost of the boat, and we're lucky that we've got this boat that doesn't need regular maintenance, mm. hopefully. Um, but I think it's still a cheap way of living once you've got your boat, once you've got your home. I think it's you can live on it very cheaply, can't you? You can, yeah, I think so. Yeah. In addition to that, we've got an, another expense for this coming year because the warranty on the boat has run out now. So we're going to have a River Canal Rescue, RCR, um, which is an insurance in case we break down, and that's £175 a year. So we haven't chosen the, the highest uh, level, have we? We've no. gone for sort of mid-range, which allows us, what, four calls? I think it's year, four call-outs, yeah. and they will repair what they can on the site. If not, they take you elsewhere to get it repaired. And I think now it actually costs, uh, covers the cost of some of the replacement parts as well. So that's really, we've used them in the past on Constanza mm. um, 
and really, really been happy with the service. It's got us out of a few fixes before now. So, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're happy to have, I wouldn't not have that really. And in the main, the guys, they go out their way, don't they, to make you floating yeah. again or running again and, and they'll uh, even yeah. bring groceries for you if you're broken down yeah. and you're in the middle of nowhere they ask you if you need anything to eat any food and stuff so it's pretty good yeah it is so that's it that's the total of our expenditure for the year on board laura Maisie. we haven't included things like food and clothing because everybody's uh, food requirements are different and I don't think we've left anything out. I think that's it. No, I'm saying that, that is really just the cost of keeping your boat on the water. Obviously, we don't have marina and mooring fees. No. Um, and there also, there were some extra things like the crossing over the Mersey to Liverpool was quite a lot of money because we had yeah. to pay for a pilot and um, boat inspections, didn't we? And a license to be on the River Mersey yeah. as well. Yeah, but it's quite expensive. Generally, if you're going to continually cruise and you don't need to pay a mooring fee, that's it. If you're going to have a marina or a mooring, then you can think again because you can add quite a lot more money onto mm. that. So that's it. We thought we'd just uh, let you into a year aboard Laura Maisie, how much it cost and how far we've been. And it's been a great year. We've had such such a lot of fun. Um, no, I don't think we've had any scary moments either, have we, this year? Maybe just on that, the Mersey. Just that one in the Mersey in the canal, wasn't it? What, that in green lock, boy? In the lock <laughs> and the green boy that you hit. <laughs> but it's been a fab year and she's a fab boat. We're really happy. Yeah. Um, so happy birthday, Laura Maisie. Yeah, and here's looking to the next year. Definitely. Cheers, they'll see you all next time. See you soon. Bye. Bye.